you is the freedom to help your neighbor, which is the freedom to distribute, including publication, copies of the program to others when you wish. And freedom three is the freedom to help build your community, which is the freedom to distribute, including publication. You are modified versions when you wish. These four freedoms make it possible for users to live an upright ethical life as a member of a community and enable us individually and collectively to have control over what our software does and thus to have control of our computing. So any program that gives you these four freedoms is free software. Any license that respects these freedoms is a free software license. Anyone could, in theory, write another license, and it could be a free software license if he does the job right and it respects these freedoms. So there isn't a fixed, closed set of free software licenses. Any license that gives the user these freedoms is a free software license. And free software in general needs to have a free software license because with today's copyright law, everything that's written is automatically copyrighted. It's a very foolish decision, a, a completely foolish policy, but that's the way it is. And so the only way, and copyright law by default takes away most of these freedoms. Restrictions manage hardware whose purpose is to restrict the public. It's set up by conspiracies of companies that are formed with the specific purpose of restricting the public's use of technology. Now this ought to be a crime. In, if we had governments of the people, by the people, for the people, then the executives of those companies would be in prison. But they're not in prison, and the reason is we have government of the people by the sellouts for the corporations. <clears throat> so these conspiracies exist, and they don't even try to hide. They set up websites. We don't have to speculate, you know. We don't have to look for evidence to prove these conspiracies because they admit exactly what they're doing. They're not secret conspiracies, but they are conspiracies. <clears throat> so, our supposedly democratic governments are not satisfied merely with allowing them to set up these conspiracies. They actually give these conspiracies special help. This started in the United States with the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. That law says many things, but the controversial part is the part that says whenever a work has been published as part of a conspiracy to restrict the public, so, so that the authorized players all restrict you, then anybody who distributes, that any distribution of another player which doesn't restrict you is illegal. So for instance, consider DVDs. DVD movies are an example of this digital restrictions management. The movie is in encrypted form. And the idea is that the, cons the DVD conspiracy will only give a company the secrets of this format if the company agrees to restrict the users according to the rules of the conspiracy. So all the authorized players restrict the public the same way. And no progress is being made in terms of new features in DVD players because the conspiracy won't allow it. But then some people figured out the format and they wrote a free program which can play the movie off a DVD. And this program, called DECSS, has been censored by a court in the US. Distribution of this program is illegal. Even telling people where to find it, you, where they can get it overseas, is illegal. So, <clears throat> DRM presumes it makes sense. Now, 
it doesn't really make sense because it lumps together several different laws that are more different than similar. For instance, copyright law and patent law have a little bit in common, but all the details are different and their social effects are different. So to try to treat them as if they were one thing is already an error. To even talk about anything that includes copyright law and patent law means you're already mistaken. So that term systematically leads people into mistakes. But copyright law and patent law are not the only ones it includes. It also includes trademark law, for instance, which has nothing in common with copyright or patent law. So anyone talking about, quote, intellectual property is always talking about all of those and many others as well and making nonsensical statements. So if you say, for instance, that you especially object to it when it's used for free software, you're suggesting it might be a little more legitimate when talking about proprietary software. You mustn't do that. Yes, software can be 